Hello everyone, welcome to C++ Advanced. Today we are going to talk about R value and L value. R value and L value are not something that you run into very often. Some people have programmed C++ for years and they still don't have a good understanding of what R value and L values are. So the question to ask is, why do I care? R value and L value are actually two very important concepts in C++ core language. Having a good knowledge of them will help you understand C++ construct and to explain some seemingly strange behavior of C++. It also can help you to decipher um, compiler errors and warnings because these two terms appear quite often in the compiler messages. A second reason that you should care about them is C++11 introduced a new feature called R-value reference. If you don't have a good grasp of R-value and L-value, it will be impossible for you to learn R-value reference. So what are the L-values and R-values? It is hard to give a rigorous definition of what they are. So instead here I'm giving you a simplified definition, which is generally accepted and it should serve you well in 99% of the time. A L value is an object that occupies some identifiable location in memory. So the keyword here is it's something in memory, not something in the register. And secondly, it, is, it has an identifiable address. R value is defined by exclusion. Any object that is not an L value, it's an R value. Now let's look at some L value examples. I have an integer i. i is an L value. Why it is an L value? Because I can get its address with ampersand sign and assign the address to an integer pointer. So its address, it not only has an address and its address is identifiable. And the content of that address can be modified by assigning i to a different variable. A second example is I have a class doc and then I create a doc d1 and d1 is a L value of a user defined type, a class. It is fair to say that most of the variables in C++ code are L values. Now let's look at some R value examples. I have integer x equal to 2. As we said, x is a L value and 2 is a R value x equal to i plus 2, i plus 2 is a r value. Why are they r values? Because if I try to get their address like this, the compiler will error out. And I also cannot assign a different value to them. So they are r values. Another example, I have a doc d1 and d1 equal to doc and dog is a R value of user defined type class. Now let's look at function. I have a function sum which takes the integer x and y and return the sum of x, y. And then I have i equal to sum 3, 4. Sum 3, 4 is the R value. Now, in summary, what are the R values in these examples? 2 is a R value, i plus 2 is a R value, dog, and sum, and also x plus y is also a R value. And what are the L values? x, i, d1, Uh, that's it. Oh, I have another one, P. Now let's look at uh, reference. 
I assume you are already familiar with the reference in C++. Here I create an integer i and I initialize an integer reference r uh, with i. This reference is actually should be called L value reference because r is a, a reference to our L value i. And if I initialize the reference r with our r value 5, then the compiler will error out. And the only exception for this is if r is a const reference, then it can be assigned uh, with 5. Although you should, uh, you really should consider this is a shortcut of a two step operation. Step 1, our L value is uh, created with 5. And step number 2, the reference R is initialized with this temporary L value. Now let's look at the, the same idea with the function. I have a function square which takes a L value reference x and returns x square. When I invoke the function square i, i is an integer and it is OK. If I invoke the function square 40, then it is an error because 40 is not a L value, it's a R value. How can I make the, fun the function square 40 work? The workaround is I can change the parameter of the square function into a const uh, integer reference. And as we've seen in previous example, a const integer reference can be initialized with a R value. So the square 40 will work and the square i uh, still will work. What confuses most of the people is the transforming between the L value and R value. An L value can be used to create a, a R value. In this example, I have a L value i and I can create a R value with i plus 2. And a second example is uh, integer x equal to i. Now, what is i? Is it, is it R value? or L value. I is obviously a L value because it has an address and I, its address is identifiable. However, in this context, the I is implicitly transformed into a R value. So a L value can be implicitly transformed into a R value. However, the other way around is not valid. An R value cannot be implicitly transformed into a L value. An R value should be explicitly used to create a L value. Here's an example of using R value to create a L value. I have an integer array V and V plus 2 is a R value. However, the dereference of V plus 2 is a L value which can be assigned with a different value. Instead of continue to talk about what the R values and L values are, let's talk about what they are not. There are some misconcepts that need to be cleared up. Misconcept 1, function or operator always yields R values. This conclusion can be easily drawn from the examples that we've seen so far. Like i equal i plus 3 is our r value, sum 3, 4 is our r value. However, this conclusion is not right. And here is my counter example. I have a function foo which returns an integer reference. And in the function, I return a, a global variable by reference. So the return value from the function foo is a L value. I can write code foo equal to 50. This will compile. Some of you may say, well, this is a weird looking code. I never write code like this. Well, point taken. Then how about this example? Array 3 equal to 50. In this example, I'm invoking operator square bracket on array. 
and operator square bracket almost always generates a L value. Misconcept number two. L values are modifiable. People usually get this idea from the Lexi definition of L value in C, C language. In C, L value is defined as a value suitable for left hand side of assignment. However, this definition is no longer true in C++ because C++ has a const. And a const, although is a L value, it is not modifiable. Misconcept number three, all values are not modifiable. This seems to be pretty obvious in our examples. i plus three is an R value and it's not modifiable. Sum three four is an R value and it's not modifiable. However, this conclusion is only true for the built-in types. It is not true for user-defined type or class. For example, I can call the default constructor of dog to create a dog and then invoke the function bark on the dog. The function bark could change the state of this dog. So this R value dog is modifiable. A summary. If you cannot remember everything that I've talked about R value and L value, please do remember the summary. Number one. Every C++ expression yields either a R value or a L value. Number two, if an expression has an identifiable memory address, it is a L value. Otherwise, it's an R value. That's all for today's session. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.